I own Anchored Canine, a newly started dog training business. Um, I've been attending uh, IRGC family camp since before I can remember, so I was pretty excited when Pastor Jason asked me to come speak on dog training. Um, so, first off, my whole goal for this session is to give you some tips on how to train your dog in obedience and how to practically apply that both in the home and for the hunt. So without obedience, having a dog is not fun, okay? So what is obedience? Does anyone know? What's obedience when it comes to dog training? Typically, what does that mean? Any, any ideas? Following commands. Following commands, yeah. And some of the most basic, most common commands are what? Sit, down, stay, uh, come. That's important, especially for the hunting dogs, right? They gotta be able to come. I know my brother-in-law over there, Aaron Harm, he uh, takes his dog out hunting. He has a Labrador Retriever. And one of the problems is his dog taking off ahead of time, darting into the water. Um, so we gotta have those, those obedience commands installed in our dogs. So that's the whole goal. All of you probably know dogs that are kind of unruly. They jump on people. They dart out the door. Instead of letting you put the food dish down and let, let them go eat, they probably are like running into you, knocking things down. It's a mess. Nobody likes this kind of dog. Rather than the dog maybe being the faithful dog of our dreams, the hunting dog, um, he's a complete wreck maybe, jumping up, barking, dragging, dragging you down the sidewalk. That's no fun. Um, or they just won't sit still. They're so excited to get out there and go hunting. They kind of are uncontrollable. But well, we want to address some of these issues and encourage you that it doesn't have to be that way. There's things you can do to uh, train your dog so it's not unruly and uncontrollable. There are steps you can take to make for a peaceful home and a super good dog. If you're hunting people in here, you probably think, obedience doesn't apply to me. My dog is just going to go out there and go hunt. Well, I'd like to convince you through this workshop that it does apply. They need to have some rules that they follow. So, a little bit about myself. Uh, at the age of 16, I decided dog training would be a cool occupation. We did 4-H as kids and raised soft coated to beat terriers. How many of you know what that is? One, you had one. You better. This is our pastor a long, long time ago, and he bought a puppy from us named Greenleaf. She would get out of everything. I named her that because of her collar. The color of her collar. Good memories. Anyhow, anybody else know who Wheaton Terrier is? No. Okay, mm -hmm. you're hunting people, aren't you? <laughs> those coats, they have long hair, and it gets caught in stuff. It, it's not, not good for hunting. Okay, so yeah, I decided at 16, dog training would be cool to go to. Then I went to Bible College. Kind of got, God kind of directed me that way. So I went there for a year, and I very much appreciate what I learned there and the people I met. A lot of great people, good foundation. Highly recommend it. And then after that, I didn't want to be like all my contemporaries who they went to Bible college or they went to this school or that school, but they didn't actually pursue their dreams. So I found a school in Indiana, went there, completed the master trainer course, and then after that, the head instructor thought I should work on staff. So I became an instructor there for a little while, uh, training handlers and dogs, continuing on practically applying what I learned um, and teaching it to others. Got provided for me in crazy ways there. Good place to live on 20 acres of timber. Do you guys know what Southern Indiana is like? Hilly and timber, right? And no phone reception. That was so <laughs> annoying. Staying in touch with family members, I'd like climb up on in a tree, call them, try to get cell service, stand on top of this dump. Carolyn has pictures of me. That's my sister, by the way, Carolyn. Um, she also trained dogs. So, trains, present tense. Um, she's my decoy, too. If you're wondering, wondering what those things are, those are protect, protection equipment um, that she'll wear so she doesn't get bruises and puncture wounds and stuff with protection work. And I'll introduce him in a bit. Um, yeah, so since Indiana came back, family's here, mom, dad, and Carolyn here, Clark and Trina, siblings, Julia, brother-in-law, niece. So family's here, so I'm back. 
Uh, started my own business, like I said, Anchor Canine. Service dog training, do that. Detection, he's a narcotics detection dog. Police work, which entails protection, detection, narcotics detection. Trailing, obedience. I already mentioned service dog stuff. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of good things, a lot of fun things. Um, I'm going to give a little promo here. So, I am looking, I'm just, I'm a new business, so I'm looking to rehome protection dogs and find people who are interested in things like that. The Super Balance loves kids. Um, this one truck is for sale. And uh, I also do obedience training. So, <laughs> so yeah, if you're looking into things like that, uh, I want to prove that I can do what I say I can do. So, YouTube, subscribe. Anchor Canine, I have business cards over there. Um, yeah, so YouTube, Facebook, kind of started Instagram, not very good at that one yet. So, if you want a well-behaved dog and you need more education, contact me, I'll help you. Okay, oh yeah, the business cards have a funny, re funny reason you should take some. If you get pulled over by a cop, you guys are known for speeding, I don't know if you are or not, take some business cards, give them to the cop, okay? They might need a canine on their department. Okay? <laughs> okay, so enough of that. We should probably get training. Like I said, the goal is to teach you the basics of obedience and how you can apply them in the home, in the home and on the hunt. Okay, everyday life. Nice so to have visuals. So I have Lance with me today. Like I said, he does detection, trailing, protection, and uh, obedience trail. I think I mentioned it all. Yeah. Um, super balanced. Lance's obedience. Obedience is pretty much finished. Um, so you can see what you're kind of looking for with your dog's the goal. He likes toys more than he does treats. So I can kind of show you what you are aiming for with your dog. Answer. And of course, you might mess up, but good boy. Okay. Yeah, see that? <laughs> He's like, oh, it's a tug. Wandering turns really help, which we'll get to, and I guess I'm kind of skipping ahead. But I teach the automatic sit, so when I stop, we're supposed to automatically sit and stay there. So automatic sit implied stay. Look at his eyes. <laughs> like. Oh boy. Okay. Kind of sloppy, dude. Good. Free 
He's like, are you sure I should just check the rest first? But his alert is a what? A sit. Obedience applies to everything, okay? Sit. Go boy. Go boy. Abs. Uh uh. It's like I like this ball. Uh uh. Yes. Here. Sit. Dude. Hey. I'll do it again just for kicks. 
Watch his alert. Sometimes he lays down instead of sitting, which is fine too. So, check. I thought about giving one of you guys the narcotics and searching the crowd. My mom's like, you better not do that just in case someone has marijuana or heroin or something. Yeah, so we went with the boxes. Here. Good boy. Caroline, if you wanted to hide that again, you could just in case we have time later. Swap it? Yeah, well, move it the around. The box is still going to stain. Yep. Right. Hey, he really, really wants that. Hey, good. Okay, so I've shown you the basics of obedience, but I'll walk through it step by step so you can apply it better at home rather than going, okay, this is what my dog's supposed to do. Sit down, stay. If you don't teach them, they're not going to be doing it. I'm going to get rid of this because it's slimy. Let's go. When Lance was a puppy, funny story, I get him out for trailing, he was like 8, 9, 10 years old, and we'd do trailing, and he'd have a tennis ball. He'd collapse the tennis ball, and it'd be dripping with slobber. And when you don't have something else to put it in, you put it in your pocket. So I, I would have slobber tennis balls in my pocket, and then hand it off to someone else. Here you go. And they're like, oh, thanks. So, yeah, funny thing about Lance. That's why we use hard toys now, mostly. I don't have to get my pockets as slobbery. <coughs> so, the sit is nearly always an indication that police officers use with their dogs to indicate that there's drugs. So, sit, that's obedience. Hey, I know, I'm excited. Um, so sit, say so that if alert dogs nudge their owners when someone has a high or a low, uh, nudge their owners uh, to a problem, so they'll take their nose and like get their attention, and then if they're, if they're spiking, they'll sit, and if, they, if their blood sugar drop, they will lay down. That's how, you, how they practically apply obedience um, with service dogs. Gun dogs get overexcited to hunt and refuse to quietly sit and stay or wait. Um, maybe even darting into the water ahead of time. Some dogs do that. They need to get some obedience. They need to master that stay. Obedience gives dogs means to work their brains and burn extra calories at the same time. You would think walking up and down your lane back and forth or like taking your dog on a walk, a couple mile walk, We'll burn off tons of energy, but if you guys have active dogs like I do, it doesn't always work. What they found, and what we found practically training, Caroline and I, is that dogs that go to dog daycare and play for hours and go back home, they're still energetic. They're still tearing through the house. But the dogs that have been trained in obedience just 15, maybe, 15 sessions, maybe twice a day, they go home and they sleep. Okay, working the brain burns a lot of calories and your dog's gonna be a little more tired if he has to work his brain as well as his brawn. So it's good to burn your dog's energy, it's good so your, uh, your guests aren't clobbered. <coughs> it's just good all around. The home can be more peaceful, the hunt can be more productive rather than trying to rule in the dog. And yes, we'll appreciate it. So, I will trade off with Pippin at this point. You're free. Free. Oh boy. Pippin. Come on. There we go. Switch over the phone color. Oh boy. So, Pippin's a Dakota Sport Retriever. Seems he's a cocker spaniel, golden retriever mix. I don't know why they came up with a fancy name for a mutt, but <laughs> so yeah, this is Pippin. Um, so with all dogs, we start with the teaching phase. If your dog doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing, you can't correct him for it. If Pippin doesn't know how to speak, I mean speak, 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 he doesn't know what he means. He's not going to be able to do it. And if I correct him for that. That's wrong. No. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing and you get corrected for it, uh, there's, it's not very productive. So we have to teach them what they're supposed to do. 
which is the teaching phase, the first of four phases of training. God's not a communist, okay? My dad likes to say that. He likes to reward people who serve him. Um, instead, yeah, so he's not a communist. Instead, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 11, Hebrews 11, 6. Instead of giving us what we deserve, which is death, he offers eternal life to those who put in faith in Christ's finished work on the cross. And then once we've been adopted by Christ, once we make a decision for him, we have an opportunity to earn rewards, which is really cool. First adoption of sons, if we put faith in him, then the ability to earn rewards, not for our salvation, but for those who accept Christ's free gift. Romans 3.23, wages of sin, or Romans 6.23, sorry, wages of sin is death, so in of myself, I am hell bound, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, my faith is something that moves me on to do a good, to do a good job with the business. I want to serve people like I'm serving Christ, um, and a lot of thing, a lot of training applications come from scripture too like it's practical practical stuff once we're saved then we have an opportunity to earn rewards dogs once they're adopted they have an opportunity to gain rewards right Pippin? come sit good boy Pippin sit judge. He likes to reward so all of sin falls short of the glory of God. He still wants to give me rewards when I, when I do stuff with the right heart for him. This means what? We can potentially rack up some pretty good rewards in heaven. If we're his children, if you make a decision for Christ, then there's opportunity to earn rewards. So, I just want to say something. Knowing him and serving him with the right heart. Uh, John 14, 6. I have this on my business cards because I think it's a very important verse. I'm the way, the truth, and life. Not me. <laughs> Jesus was speaking. I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Got to know the Father through the Son. So we've got opportunities to gain eternal rewards. So we're adopted and then get an opportunity to serve him like these dogs. So, all that to say, <laughs> like, quit that. We have an opportunity, dogs have an opportunity to gain rewards, treats from us. I reward in training, if you've seen that, with whether it's a tug or treats. Some people believe dogs just need to obey because I said so. That's it. That's more of the old school trainer type. I mean, it may work for some dogs, but if all you do is corrections, you tend to shut the dogs down if there's no hope. Okay? So find out what motivates the dog and use it. Like I said, we work for a paycheck. They need to have something to work for. So Pippin is a food, food hound. <laughs> At home, I gotta be honest. I do not feed this dog. I do not give him any food. Pippin, freak. Look at him. Does he look like he's suffering? <laughs> Until two days ago, he looked like a fat hog. Until I shaved a little bit of his hair. Yeah, so I don't feed this dog. He finds scraps, like chicken bucket stuff. I'm surprised he's not dead yet. Um, but he just gets into stuff. He'll take his paw and, like, get food out of the other dog's trays, like the crate, put, it, put his feet in there, and try to get the food towards himself. Yeah, so he, he gets enough food. I just don't have to pay for it. Down. <laughs> Super handy. Dad doesn't like this dog because he likes my mom, and he'll follow her all around. My dad, I think, I don't know. I'm not going to say it. He doesn't like the dog because the dog likes my mom too much. He sleeps outside her door. If she goes to go to the bathroom, he walks there. We were bailing hay, and she was walking inside the baler. You know, balers, they typically, I mean, a lot of times they don't work square, square balers, old ones. So she was walking along it, nodding the things that didn't tie, the, the twine that didn't tie. Pippin, he walked. I don't know how many steps that day, but he walks with her every step of the way. 
he's, he loves my mom. He's my dog, but he abandoned me for my mom. <laughs> so, yeah, don't feed the dog. What, where, where am I going with that? Yeah, he likes food, he likes rewards. Uh, some dogs, hot dogs, are the best means of rewarding a dog. They're cheap, they're highly motivating. Have a pouch full of them. Your hands get slimy. You can put them in the microwave if it makes you feel better. Or just carry a paper towel and wipe your hands from the slaughter. Yeah, so hot dogs or regular kibble. A lot of dogs will work for that too. Instead of just giving your dogs their dish. <laughs> See, he goes towards mom. He doesn't even think about me. So instead of just Giving your dog its food every morning, setting it down. Here, dog, have some free food. Sorry, right, Pippin, I don't see that. <laughs> you could use it as a training, means of training your dog. So instead of just giving them all the food at once, how would you do something for it? Down. Yeah. Okay, I talk like 
I'm talking to a two-year-old when I talk to my dog sometimes, but they know I'm really pleased when I get high pitched. That's just me and them. And they understand it. Okay. So some dogs don't know what they're doing wrong when the owners are constantly correcting them because they haven't been taught what what the commands are. So they're not being rebellious, they just don't know it. They haven't taught it to them. There's some dogs that act like they're stupid. Like this one, he acts like he's stupid sometimes. He's like, I don't know that. But he does, and I just need to draw it out of him. Make him do it. He's not dumb. Uh, timing is another important thing. So teaching phase. We went through the teaching phase. You need to teach them what they need to do. Um, then corrections, rewards. Timing is very important within one and a half seconds. Dogs think in the moment, so you've got to reward in the moment. Take that. Make sure you teach your dogs what they what these commands mean. Uh, <coughs> so luring, that was the whole point. Uh, you got to teach the dog how to do these behaviors uh, before you can demand it of them. So I guess I'll do Lance. Lance here. Good boy. Good boy. Luring, you guys are probably or. Guys and gals, probably sportsmen, you probably like to hunt and fish, which means you use lures, right? What do they do? They kind of lure in the fish. Good boy. Well, same thing with dog training. Hey, good. So that was a little correction. Hey, that's my word for correcting too, one of them. Um, so luring means you are going to put treats in your hand, lure them how you want them, in position. Good boy. So that's it down. It's not super important when you're first starting that you tell them <coughs> that you tell them down because they don't know what it means. What? Oh. Yeah, he's in German. I was telling him down, but whatever. He should know by now. He's with that with me when I train English speaking. <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> Good flats. Good boy. Okay, so I lured him to a down. I will take the treats in my hand. Come here. Sit. Lure him. Like, this is an advanced lure because it's here. It's away from his face a little more. Hey, easy. Good boy. So, that's, that's where dogs start. This looks easy because he knows it, but a lot of dogs from the down. Sit. Well, I should say some dogs. Here. Everybody be able to see. Some dogs, they don't go down on their own and they pop their bum up. What I do, put my leg over them unless they're super nervous. So their bum can't pop back up and lure them the rest of the way. And reward, continue rewarding them for staying in that. A lot of dogs are going to want to pop up, but you reward for them staying there. And if they move, you just correct with verbal or ah ah. Sorry, Lance, you didn't do anything wrong. So that's luring. That's where it starts. You're going to do this for about a week, probably. I train. You might be surprised. I don't train for 10 hours every day, or 4 hours every day with one dog, or 2 hours with one hour. A lot of times, it's 15 minutes, maybe less if it's a younger dog. 15 minutes or less, okay, sit twice a day, especially with the dogs that first start. That's the formal training sessions where I work on luring and uh, fading those out. So, with your dogs, don't feel like you have to commit two hours every day to train your dog. They're going to be bored and not listen, most likely, by the end of the ten minutes or whatever. got to keep it exciting. So, use a lot of hand motions. That's fading things out. Practically, when you're out hunting, if you want your dog to down from a distance, you saw me with, with that long recall, you want him to, him to be still, or if he's about to cross the road and a car's coming. My German Shepherds, especially since they like to get in trouble, um, I have them down or plot at a distance. They, they've got that down pretty fluently. Because I, if I want them to be still, I get in trouble, um, that's just what I do. Rather than them, I don't know, what do they do? Chase a squirrel or something? Chickens. Chickens? Chase the chickens because the chickens are like all fluttering around and they, the dogs are like, oh, let's eat some tasty chicken today. <laughs> um, I put, I tell them to 
flat or down, and that will get them contained. Okay? Something that's super helpful with these guys. They've got a lot of fray drive, like the Philippines, which they don't when I'm outside. But, <laughs> yeah. Okay. When, yeah, when you're teaching them uh, the visuals, the down with the hand is, or the up to sit, it's very helpful. Before insisting on too many corrections, teach the dog what you want. Luring. Um, luring phase lasts about a week. I told you the training schedule. Uh, for puppies that are under four months old, in general, most puppies under four months old, you can't do a lot of hardcore obedience with. I mean, labs may be the exception. Oh, I guess he's not in here. But, you know, labs are pretty smart. No. <laughs> That's kind of a tease with my sister because she doesn't like them. She thinks they're fat and ugly. But I think they're smart in general. Okay? So puppies under four months old, keep it really simple. Five minutes maybe at most for puppies because at some point they're just like looking around and super bored. Keep them engaged. Keep it simple when they're young. The focus should be on creating good habits in their puppies like house training with a crate. If you use crates, I recommend them. Um, crate training uh, and socialization. You don't want this dog that's never gotten out, this COVID puppy that's a complete wreck and pees all over the place because it's nervous. You want a good socialized dog. About four months old, they can hit the training pretty hard in general. Uh, so correction phase. So teaching, once a dog knows, sit, sit. Sit means sit. Then if you were to break, how do I make you break? You're going to play devil's advocate. Okay? Ah, uh ah! -uh. Six. Okay, that was a little harsh, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? See? This is his character. Uh-huh. What did I tell you about Pippin? It's fine. Sorry, Lance. So if they're going to break, we're going to correct them now. And I use the prong collar and my verbal to correct for bad behavior. Okay. So that's the correction phase. You know, Pip, or Lance knew he was supposed to stay, but I was kind of mean and it added a super distraction. Hey. Okay, so correction phase, definitely use your words. Dogs can't read your mind. They can read your facial expressions, <laughs> but you communicate with them. Once they know what, what they're supposed to do and they don't do it, uh -uh. tell them, okay? Uh, something that I see a lot of people do wrong is they say, Sit, 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 sit. I'm oh, sorry, Lance. I know, it's painful, okay? Don't repeat it over and over again if you can help it. I know it's a hard habit to break. I probably did it at the beginning, too. Repeating the command, thinking that, okay, number 15, if I sit 15 times, my dog will sit. No, tell them once. You guys have kids, you probably know. You probably you should tell them once and not give in, okay? So say it once. If they don't obey, correct. So if he doesn't obey, it's here. Should have brought, brought a bad dog. Good boy. If he doesn't obey with the first time, correct. By means of uh-uh or no, I use that word or that whatever it is more because it comes out quicker. And then correct with a pop on the prong or flat paw, whatever you have. Six. So say it once, then correct. Okay, this is a prong collar educational thing. This is a prong collar. It looks mean and vicious. And it can be. If you use it the wrong way, this thing can catch on crates, cause sores. It could be a very vicious tool and they're on hands. But used properly, it's the most humane tool. You know why? Because it is not like a choke chain. You know what a choke chain is? It like nooses like a lasso around their neck. The tighter you pull, the more it encloses around their neck, cuts off 
they're chafing you. They can't breathe, and it might even cause spinal damage from like jerking on it. This thing goes on the skin, and it mimics a mama dog's nip. When the mama dog has puppies, and they misbehave, he found a piece of table, sorry, it's distracting. And they misbehave, she will nip and release, okay? If you watch a pack with a mama dog, she's gonna pop and release, okay? Not with a crown bug, but with her teeth. She's gonna do it real quick. This thing mimics that, and therefore, it communicates clearly with the dog. Some dogs are too timid, like the timid dogs, you want to combine the O-ring and the D-ring to, min to minimize the pop. The ones that are super nervous, some dogs don't need this at all. Lance would probably be okay without it, and they'd be fine. They don't wear these all the time, mind you, just uh, when they're out training or during the day or take them out somewhere, just in case there's distractions, um, it, it's a good way to rope them back in. So here, Hermit Springer, that's what this is. They're like 35 or $40 or something. More expensive. They've got the plate, they're a German brand. And then there's a train dog you can get off Amazon. They're like 12, 13, $14, something like that. Um, I don't really want to spend a ton of time on this because I don't have necessarily a ton of time left. So I plan on making, plan on making a YouTube video and then I can share all this information with you how tight to have it, where to put it on the neck, um, which brand, where to buy them, whatever. So if you want to sign up, there's a clipboard over there, write your email, and I'll send you a link to a YouTube video that I will make with more information on that. So mimics a mama dog's nip, that's why it's productive. It goes on the skin, it doesn't hurt the muscle like a choke chain or flat collar does. And some people, they're really yanking on the flat collar. And it's not effective because it's just a flat collar, but it is effective in hurting their body. Um, they've done a study and compared choke chains and thong collars. The, I think there was only one out of 40 dogs, right Caroline? Correct me if I'm wrong. Out of 40 dogs, there was only one that had issues with its throat that used a prong collar. The dogs that used the choke chains, like all but one or two, had issues. Their trachea was messed up their spine because they're just are more harsh tool, even though they look nicer, the choke chain. Some dogs, like I said, may not need it, maybe those labs again, but normally the choke chain is a good place to start, or prong collar is a good place to start. Okay. Another thing that a lot of owners do, when I get done training the dogs, we do a follow-up session with obedience dogs, especially. And a lot of times, the owners will be like, sit, sit down. Like, they make it a question for their dogs. If I question Pippin, he's probably not going to obey, okay? If I tell him, sit, like a question, they're probably not going to listen. But if you say, sit down, Day. You don't have to be mean, but don't make it a question. It's not a question. If you tell them to do it, they're supposed to do it, okay? Don't make it a question. So, how much time do we have? Okay, there's a series of things that obedience is helpful for. Training do training your dog's nails. How many of your dogs hate getting their nails trimmed? Raise your hand. Okay, some of you guys. So when you're going to train their nails, if they like treats, give them a treat at the same time that you do their nail trimming. He is really good with his nails and try not to cut the quick. So that's one way, I mean that's maybe not obedience, but that's, uh, that's distracting them while you get their nails trimmed. Heel with the lure. Heel. Teach the heel. Use, use the lure. I should have done this earlier. To show them where to go. The first whole week. So, here. First whole week, probably you're going to be luring. Then, or so. Then, if they uh, wander off, you're going to use the corrections and pop. Did I tell you? I don't think I told you about the popping. You've got to pop them back to you. Heel. Come on. Really. Come on. See that slight little pop? It's firm, yet effective. Good boy. Come on, leave it. Do the best. It's free. Yeah. So the heel, sit, stay. Uh, something we do for walks, just casual walks in the neighborhood. You don't want your dog to have 
to formally heal with you everywhere you go necessarily. Um, but another thing we came up with is a let's go. He doesn't have to be perfectly to my side. He can be sniffing, he just can't be pulling. Pulling is not fun. Yes. So the let's go, this is very casual. He doesn't have to. If he bleeds my left leg, it's an option. If you guys want to take your dogs on walk, but not walks, but not have them have to be formally in a heel position. So preteen, I will use Pippin for Pippin, wake up, come. Pippin, come. How many of you guys' dogs like to dart out of their crates? If you use crates, or dart out the door. Yeah, I do too. So I made them do some obedience before getting out. Pippin, sit. Sit, sit. I don't know how well you can see. But I put him in a sit. I don't want him darting out the door. Stay. He's gonna go to leave before I tell him. I'll quickly close the crate. Same thing with the door. If, the, if I put, if I go to a door, want him to sit, be under control. I put him in a sit, stay. And if he goes to guard out the door, I'll quickly close it. Okay, let's add some some difficulty here. He likes food, so. So, we quickly close it. Good boy. Free. Some dogs really hate going in their crates. Normally because that we use the crate as a means of punishment, and it should be a fun den-like place for them. Come in, get up. So, my dogs like their crates. That's where they get fed and I throw treats in there. And it's like a den for a dog. Okay, Pippin, good boy. That's how you practically apply it in one way at home. Another way, I have to pretend I have a jumping dog. Lance really isn't, hasn't ever been a jumper. Free. But if you a jumpy dog, a lot of dogs do, do this at the door. New people come in, company, they're like, hi, and then the dog's just clobbering them. Put them in a sit, like he's doing, as the handler. Ah, sit. Put them in a sit, make them stay there. And then your company can give them attention if they want. That's a practical way of applying it. Free. On the field, on the field, uh, when out hunting, <coughs> make sure Sweets. they've got their obedience down if you want them to be under control. Um, it's very, very practical. When you can communicate with your dog effectively at a distance, keep them under control. Flats. Yeah. Good boy. Uh, as far as retrieving things, if your dog has trouble outing things, like he's had trouble. Flats. There's two options. I mean, there's more than two. But you can either swap with, them, swap with them, like if they have a bird or something, I know that's probably higher value. Free. You can either swap with them. Or as there's a self-out method, which, hey, which is where you hold, I wouldn't do this with a bird, but at home with a few bumpers or whatever, I honestly, oh, hey, yeah, you don't want me to say that, huh? No, okay, so you're gonna, free, you're gonna play with them, yay, and then you're gonna tell them to out if they, they know what it should mean, and if they don't out, you just hold it there, it becomes dead, it's boring, you hold it still, and eventually they're gonna be like, oh, this is boring. And then reward, give it back to them for outing. Does that make sense? So they like the activity of tug, which you're probably not doing as much since you have bird dogs. So you don't want birds, bruised birds. But like I said, if you hold it still, it becomes boring, it becomes dead. Uh, eventually, you might be here 30 minutes, but you <laughs> let go. Because it's a natural, it's something that is 
uh, pleasant for them. When they finally release, then it's, it gives them a relief. Okay. And then you can do it again. Okay. Got five minutes. Ice. Good boy. So, something else I wanted to mention briefly, antler shed hunting, that might be something you're interested in. We could trade it. Um, it can be done like you do narcotics detection, which I can't get into that right now. But if you're interested in that antler shed hunting, I would definitely like to show you how it's done and the steps to get to that point where a dog, where you can go out with your dog, find antler sheds. They smell, you know, they use their sense of smell to find them. My brother and I, my brother in law uh, has two boxes, well, maybe more of these. And it's very impressive. If you want, if you're interested in that, let me know. Uh, guy, if you're interested in doing it yourself, Jeremy Moore with Dog Bone is a good uh, YouTuber guy. I think his process is a lot longer than it needs to be. It kind of like um, detection training is a fairly quick process. Um, in the last few minutes, I would like to see if there's any questions you guys have with dog training in regards to anything we've talked about or in general. Comments, questions? Yeah? You mentioned briefly about feeding inside the kennel. Yeah. Uh, why do you prefer that versus outside the kennel? Because it makes the kennel a pleasant place. And it's just, I have a lot of dogs, so keep them in their spaces. Um, it makes the crate a positive experience. If they don't eat it all, some other dog like Pippin is not going to come over and snatch it up. So it makes it a pleasant experience. They get to keep their own food and not get some other dog snatching it up. Yeah, good question. Yes. You mentioned speak. Yeah. How do you teach a dog to speak? Pippin don't know how to speak. So. He doesn't know how to speak. Can you teach him how to speak? I could. Yeah. Yeah, you so I capture, you know how you take a picture, you capture a behavior. They caught him barking. I could capture that behavior and reward it. Same with speak. Sometimes they find their voice and they like to talk a little bit too much. But you can have an off switch. I'm not saying you can't. Um, another way with blankets <laughs> is if you pick up one of those things and start waving it around. Or if you stare at him in the eyes, please do not do this. If you stare at him, if you look threatening, I'll do it to him because I'm his owner. But if you look too big, you stare at him in the eyes, he will probably start barking. So that's how you teach him to bark. <laughs> if you're threatening towards him, he uh, takes that seriously. He's a protection dog. Um, other dogs find what they like. Oh, he's got a tug. I can get him to bark at the tug because he really, really likes it. You, you wave it around and or a ball. Get a signal or something. Not until they bark. Because right. if they don't know what it is, the teaching phase, there's no point in giving them a signal. Blast. Yeah, so you kind of just excite them up until they do bark, and then capture that and reward. Yes, good speak. Good boy. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Do you use any whistles or bells or recommend doing that for certain things? It depends um, what, what you're comfortable with. Some people use a lot of whistles for hunting. I honestly don't do a ton of hunting. So I have a brother-in-law that's the expert in the hunting dog world. Yeah, uh, as far as like clicker training versus using your words as a marker, like yes, good. I'd rather use my words because I always have my voice, pretty much always, except colds. So I use that. If you're working on long distance retreats or whatever, you'll probably, I don't know, whistles would be good. Yeah, I'm not super experienced in the whistle department, but I use my voice. Yes. Train, <coughs> you train the dog to be able to sniff out the shiny. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do you train them to stay away from something? <laughs> train them to stay away from stumps. No. <laughs> Actually, my brother's dog just got sprayed. Like, I don't know, on Sunday, right before church. Yeah, I haven't. We haven't had a lot of encounters with stumps necessarily, but if I focus on it, I'm sure, I'm sure it could be done. <laughs> Stunts mean don't approach. I'm sure it could be done, but no. Any other? Yes? So, let's say you can have a five, six, you know, eight-year-old dog that's not trained, that's 
sense their owner's uh, blood sugar level, what sense do they use? Like, can, they go by, can they actually detect that somehow or do they go by the owner's yeah. actions? Yeah, they smell sweat. They can smell sweat. Yeah. You know, your chemistry dogs smell fear, they can smell changes, they can smell when someone's pregnant. Like My, my brother's dog followed my around, mom around a lot when she was pregnant with my brother. They just have a really good sense of smell. And traumatic death scenes, they can, they can actually smell that like a place where there, someone died dramatically, there's some sort of smell we put out, and they well sometimes they'll drag their handlers out of there. Smell is a big, big thing. Yeah. So we're out of time. If you have more questions, you can find me. I'll be around today and ask them. Thanks for your attention. Hope it helps out.